Welcome to Greenie's Garden. What's up, Green Army? It's Brandon and Alyssa. Hey, guys. And we hope all of you guys are having an awesome day today. We're here at our peace place, our favorite place in the world, a place where we spend so much time, and that's where? It's in our backyard. Our backyard. Grateful to be here, to have grown all of this with my awesome wife, Greenie. Um, you know, it just, again, this place is our happy place. But today's video is we're gonna show you guys the shade tree. We're gonna talk about the importance of the shade tree. We're gonna talk about the best shade tree, in our opinion, um, of course. But we gotta start with a few shade trees um, just to kind of give you a background of them and what they might be doing right or wrong. The first one we're gonna start with is this sisu tree behind me. And look at the height on this guy. I could confidently say the sisu tree is a very, very fast grower. Um, it will provide that microclimate for your subtropicals, tropicals, uh, you know, anything that needs to be protected from the Arizona sun. Arizona sun <laughs> is a lot different than beautiful California, beautiful Florida. I mean, it's, it's different. They have their beautiful, unique things about them, but Arizona is hot. We all know that. No point in complaining about it. We just got to roll with it. But back to the shade tree is this shade tree, once it grew up, it really housed a lot of our subtropicals. I mean, it housed our plumerias that, I mean, started off as just a stick. Um, it really protected these guys. There's a longin right here that just went, this guy's probably like two and a half years old. It went through such a rough first year. Um, and keep in mind guys, this shade tree was not here. Our sun kind of goes like this in the summertime. It's right above me. So what that's doing is it created such a good microclimate for this area. We even got our sixth avocado to actually grow because of this tree. Um, so just super grateful for it, but it's time for the downfall about the Sisu tree. The Sisu tree is invasive. The reason why we say that is because we were at a client's house, we'll say, for instance, they were having a problem with trees growing in their area. We were a little confused because there was no shade tree around. And they had, I don't know, like 50 little baby sisu trees. It was pretty scary to see. It was scary because when you turned around and faced west, the neighbors behind them had like three sisu trees in their yard and it happened to take over their yard. They were very upset about it. Um, I mean, you, you can't be wrong, the tree was beautiful, but it was harming the neighbors. It was overgrowing. What happens is the sisu tree gives off these seeds, right? And if you're a gardener, your soil is organic. Like we, we, we trust you guys, you know gardening. Building the soil is key. If these guys were to fall in our mulch area, it's a guaranteed tree. I mean, it's guaranteed to grow. We've actually already pulled a couple of little seedlings up. I know. So with that is they could come up from seed or what happens is the root. The root can shoot out and then a new shoot comes from the root stock. Can we poke our heads over the fence, do you think? Yeah, if here actually. If you go this way, if you walk through there, and let's poke our head over here real quick. You see that sisu tree right there? So that big one is a sisu. But if you look right on the other side of the wall, that's a baby sisu right there. And it could have grown from a seed, right? or it could be poking up from one of the sisu's roots. Right. So that's just a good example to see it right there. I mean, you know, this is so free. So to actually see it means a lot, guys, to us, you know, to be able to show you that. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like I've been just talking so much about this tree. Unfortunately, guys, when it starts to cool down, our good friend's gonna be coming over and helping us take down this tree. So we're gonna be filming that and showing you guys an update on it. It's, a, it's gonna be a sad day, because we love all trees. But we think it'll be best for the yard. Right, it'll be best for the yard, it'll be best for our other tropical, subtropicals in that area. So the Sisu tree is the first one we talked about. Beautiful canopy, but I don't believe that it's gonna be the best tree for your backyard food forest. So Sisu tree, we covered in our yard. Um, we have to show you guys some more shade trees though. I think, should we show him Henry? Yeah, let's go okay. check out that. Henry. Let's check out Henry. This is Henry. Henry has been with us since day one. I yeah. would say this is our first shade tree, right? This is the first tree I think we planted, period. Yeah, before mangoes, before the avocados and everything. Um, this was, just 
we would come out here and just like praise this tree. It was just a shade tree. But we're so grateful because as we grew as gardeners, we understand that you gotta build that microclimate, guys. If you wanna grow, especially like your mangoes, avocados, and your star fruits, they need that morning sun, afternoon shade. Um, so yeah, Henry here is the first shade tree we had. And just a real quick tip. I mean, if you agree with me or not, my love. I think that we understand now that if we could do this all over again, we would definitely, definitely have started with shade trees. Yeah, absolutely. It would have saved a lot of time, um, a lot of money, because we killed a lot of trees out here when it was just bare and covered in fruit trees. Right, it's like full sun, I'm super excited, it's healthy for a week, and you go outside and it's not there anymore. A little frustrating, but you get to understand and learn. You guys gotta protect your investment. You know, that's one thing that we don't like is wasting money. So if you guys can put some effort into the shade trees, your tropicals and subtropicals are gonna love you guys. So just the idea, this is a Chinese elm. Um, and again, this is Henry, he's over three years old. Um, he's giving so much protection to the carry mango right there. I mean, if you guys can see, yeah, she is coming back so nice as this thing grows over as the canopy, she seems to really, really enjoy Henry's company. So I'd say Sisu tree, probably don't want those in your food forest. But a Chinese elm is a great decision um, if you're going to really build that food for us, guys. Um, should we talk to him about our favorite? Yeah, let's touch on the best one. Okay. <laughs> we are going to go up to the front yard because there's really, really good examples over there. And then we'll talk to you guys about the backyard because we implemented this tree everywhere. So let's go to the front yard. Let's check it out, guys. Let's go. All right, guys. So we brought you here on our side yard. And I have to say this is my favorite shade tree. It's the... This is a Tipuana Tipu. It's the Tipuana Tipu tree. It's an Australian tree uh, that accepts our climate, guys. I have to say that my favorite part about the Tipuana Tipu is most trees take nitrogen, right? They just, they're hungry, they need food. What's so awesome about this tree is it's so giving, guys. It produces nitrogen. So it's fixing your soil, guys. It's pushing nitrogen in your soil. So any plants around your tipu, you're really gonna notice a really nice green color to them. Of course, as long as you keep them hydrated. It's not just gonna take care of the tree for you. Right. You still gotta water your trees. But for this guy, this is the oldest tipu on a tipu that we have in our yard. And we just planted it, what, two summers ago? About, yeah. It's only a couple years old. Yeah, this is only a couple years old. If you guys wanna come in close real quick, it has these gorgeous yellow flowers. Check it out. It has these awesome yellow flowers on it. And in the spring, it's just covered in these. The whole tree is kind of yellow. Right, and what I noticed about the Tipu on a Tipu is it's an evergreen. But we, ex we noticed this year, a couple of them kind of went dormant a little bit, but they shot out new growth everywhere. Like Alyssa said, about over two years old. And this guy just gave off a canopy. Like, in the summertime, guys, our sun is, this is the hottest part of our yard is this side yard. Um, and having this guy here really changed everything, guys. Um, it just, it changed my love for the plants around it. They all did a lot better. Um, and again, I can't stress it enough. You still gotta keep them on a water schedule. One quick thing, our tip is especially with the brand new shade tree. Um, actually, I'll get that tip to you guys when we go check out one more tree, okay? Um, but yeah, I just, so grateful for this tree. Thank you for protecting us and our plants. I can't get over it. If you guys are looking for a really good shade tree, you gotta go with the Tipu on a Tipu. I mean, I feel like we just, we're always talking about this tree, um, but I have to show you kind of like a, a comparison. So keep in mind, this tree is two years old. Do you mind kind of stepping back and getting like a big view of it? This is a two year old Tipu tree. It's so big, tree. it barely fits on camera. Really? Yeah. Check it out guys, this is the Tipu tree right here. I can just sit under it. No problems. Full sun, I can be here all day. <laughs> so we gotta show you one more. Let's go to the front. I'm super excited to show you guys this last one. Let's go. All right guys, the last example is another Tipuana Tipu, but you guys can really see the difference. So remember the two-year-old Tipu. This Tipu right here is about one year old. This thing has put off a really good growth spurt this year. Um, I just can't get over it, guys. Look at the sweet potatoes underneath it. 
I can truly, truly give this tipu so much credit um, because most sweet potatoes can take full sun, but if you give them a little bit of shade, I mean, these things kind of came upwards instead of just covering the ground. Uh, so the tipu guys, great example of a fast growing shade tree and a nice growing shade tree. It gives nitrogen. I feel like I'm gonna say this a hundred times before the video <laughs> ends. Like, I just get so excited because this tree's so nice. Like, such good vibes. And again, a year. This is a year's worth of growth right here, guys. One tip that we wanna give you here at Greeny's Garden is especially on this tree is the first two weeks, we really gave it you know, a good amount of water. This was a 15 gallon tree. We gave it at least 15 gallons for the first week. So the first week we gave it 15 gallons. If you have to get a five gallon bucket, fill it up three times. That's 15 gallons. That's really how I felt like we really know how much water we're giving the trees. Yeah, it's a great way to start to learn exactly how much water comes out of your hose at a certain rate. If you kind of count awesome. how long it takes to fill up a 15 gallon bucket, yep. then you know how long to hold the hose at the bottom of Tell the tree. Tell them, babe. Seriously, <laughs> our experience, and we never tell you guys it's like Greenies Garden or nothing else. Right. Experiment, guys. We love to just show you what's happening in our yard with our microclimate. Um, you don't have to be a master gardener, guys. You don't have to have your paperwork. You have to have a heart, love, and just love for gardening. And a little curiosity. A little curiosity, right. So you gotta be there for your garden. Mother Nature needs you for that first couple years. I mean, it's so important to make sure your tree's getting water. Your tree will not grow like this in a year if you don't water it properly. That's why we're making our video, guys, to tell you the best shade tree in our opinion and really take care of those trees for the first two years even. I mean, look at, we haven't named him yet, but look at that tipu, guys. I just, it's an umbrella. It's like a mother nature's umbrella. So if you guys are thinking, if you have a blank slate, if you're thinking about starting a food forest, growing tropical, subtropicals, what I can say and I hope my wife would agree with me, is start with shade tree, guys. Yeah. Um, it's not just the tipu that's out there. I mean, you got other options. We're just telling you what we have. Um, I think the next tree that's gonna be in our yard that's a shade tree might be a Hong Kong orchid. Oh, those are so pretty. Just for the beauty, guys. It grows into a nice canopy. Um, and we've seen some beautiful mature ones out in Arizona. So I, we really hope this, guys, that this video can help you, inspire you to really respect your shade trees um, and to please protect your investment. When you go by those mango trees, think about, is it getting shade and how much shade? Microclimate, microclimate, microclimate. <laughs> That's all I'll do. That's end of microclimate word. So <laughs> I hope you guys had fun today. We always have so much fun talking to you guys. Um, and just out there, guys, we love all of you guys and we love the support. Thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. And as always, we hope all of you have an awesome day today. <laughs> Bye, guys.